Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey and I'm a speech language pathologist. In this video, we are going to be going over seven tips when communicating with your child with hearing loss. These tips are not only helpful for parents or caregivers of the child um, who is hard of hearing, but really anyone, um, any adult um, or child for that matter, who interacts with a, a child with hearing loss. All right, let's get into the tips. The first tip I have is to face the child when speaking to them. Being able to see a person's facial expressions and mouth is so important for a child who's hard of hearing. Depending on the age of the child, they may even start to look at the lips and start lip reading to figure out what a person is saying rather than solely relying on um, what they hear. The second tip I have is to make sure you have good lighting on your face. Okay, so this tip makes me think of when you're having like a Zoom meeting with someone and they're sitting directly in front of a well-lit window. If you've ever experienced this before, you probably remember that you couldn't really see that person's face too well because it was bright behind them and making kind of a shadow on their face. If possible, when you're talking to your child with hearing loss, you should make sure that you're in an area with um, good lighting. So this could be, you know, a natural light. Make sure that you're standing in front of it with your face facing the window rather than with it coming in behind you um, or just like a general room with, um, with good lighting in it. The third tip I have is to make sure to get your child's attention before delivering your message or telling them something. Doing this, getting their attention first, will give them the opportunity to focus on you and your face before figuring out what you're saying. Um, whereas if you don't get their attention first, they may miss the first part of your message, kind of trying to orient themselves, um, you know, seeing who's talking and focusing on your face. So by getting their attention first, Hopefully they won't miss the first part of your message. The fourth tip I have is to talk slightly on the side of your child's better hearing ear. This tip might seem obvious, but if your child does happen to hear better from one ear than another, it is just a good reminder to kind of orient yourself to that side, um, the better hearing ear rather than the other when speaking to them. The fifth tip I have is to eliminate background noise. Most children who are hard of hearing have an even more difficult time hearing when there's a lot of background noise, such as in places like a playground, a large family gathering, um, or even, you know, like at a restaurant or something. This fact is just good to keep in mind when you are in these situations so that if you do need to tell your child something important or you want them to be able to hear you or others, to try to find um, an area at that event um, or location that's a bit quieter. So um, an example of this would be if you're at a restaurant, for example, try to avoid sitting in some of the noisier places. So a noisier place at like a restaurant would be like, um, you know, in the center of the restaurant where people are passing through frequently, as well as maybe near the bathroom or kitchen where people are going to be coming in and out of a lot. The sixth tip I have is to repeat what you say in a different way. When speaking with a child who has hearing loss or anyone for that matter, you may have to repeat a message multiple times before they understand or hear you correctly. If by the second or third time the child is still not understanding what you're saying, try repeating your message with different words. Chances are if your child isn't understanding you after multiple attempts to say the same message or get the same message across, they're not going to understand you the fourth or fifth time that you're saying it, which is why it's important to try to change the way you're saying um, what you're trying to tell them. For example, instead of saying... I'm setting my timer for five minutes and then we have to go. You can change your message to in five minutes, we need to go or in five minutes, we need to leave. You see in this example that the overall point you're trying to get across stays the same, but you kind of just change the words a little bit. The seventh tip I have is to confirm understanding with your child. Oftentimes what may happen when talking to a child with hearing loss is they think they understand what you're saying 
When in fact, when you go to confirm it with them, you realize that they, they understood something different. You can confirm understanding with your child by first just confirming that they heard or understood you or even better, having them repeat specific information that was in the message you were delivering to them. For example, if you're explaining that they're going over to their friend Jamie's house on Saturday for a sleepover, you could confirm they understood that message by making sure that uh, they know what friend or you know whose friend's uh, house they're going over to and then what day or what time, any important um, specific information that was in um, the what you were saying to them before. Well, those are all the tips I have to share in today's video. But if you have any tips that work for you when communicating with your child with hearing loss, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you have any questions, also leave them there. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a good day and happy talking.